the, so the little tiny ones will eventually go into our what we call our preschool and nursery. Okay, here is our kindergarten section. These are roughly in the three to four year old. We have an elementary size animal, uh, gazebo size, a little bit bigger. Uh, middle school size, even bigger than that. Junior high, we have a brand new junior high. We just opened it up a few days ago. And a high school size. These are in the four foot range. Five to maybe eight years old. Again, depending on the life they've had. Although there's probably two or three in there that are 20 years old. At this size, I don't see a, we see very little aggression, but they're trying to, they're getting on the warm dark tarp because the tarp's probably 75 degrees. And so they'll also get on top of each other because they're black. The black, again, radiates that heat and allows them to kind of steal their, uh, the heat that's near them. We'll see a little bit of that even in the middle school, but by July, you won't see that because it's 95 degrees and it's kind of like us. Don't touch me, I'm hot. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more space yeah. between the animals. There's... Usually because the sun comes up here in the southeast, uh -huh. these animals will sit by this black wall because it's absorbing that sun mm -hmm. and they're trying to get warm for the day. Um, you may have seen pictures even over the last several years up in, they say, North Carolina, where they had the lakes freeze a little bit for a day or two, and you'll see alligators with their noses sticking out. They are what we call subtropical, so they are, they've evolved to deal with temporary chilly temperatures. They can do that. The crocs and the caimans that we have cannot do that. It's warm all, all year round. In fact, those animals live within about 600 miles of the equator all over the planet, and so they're close to that that warm zone all the time. These guys can have various fluctuations and still be okay. The thick tail means they're super, super healthy. They can go a long time without food. Mm -hmm. Alligators cannot digest food properly at temperatures below about 65 degrees. So right about October, we'll actually stop feeding our alligators, most of them. Uh, so we'll stop doing the feeding. And then about a week or so later, we gather them all up and they go inside the containers. Now inside the containers, the temperature in there is about 60 to 62 all winter. Not warm, not cold. There's water systems in there, there's environmental controls, there's cameras all hooked up to our cell phones as well as our computers so we can monitor animals. We don't have to go in there, but they kind of lay around and they wait. That's called a brumation period, not a hibernation because they're not asleep. So for about five to six months, they're not eating, but they have to look healthy for that to happen. The same thing happens in Florida. For the three months of December, January, February, most of the alligators are hiding. They're waiting for the warmer temperatures to come up so they can begin their cycles all over again. Now there's actually a cute little way to tell how big an alligator is just by looking at their head. So if you look at this guy sitting on the brick right there, you'll see his eyes uh -huh. and you'll see his nostrils, which are near the end of his snout. There is a gap or a distance here between the eyes and, and nostrils. With that animal, that's about, about three and a half inches. So we have a three and a half foot alligator, okay? So if you see five inches, you got a five footer. You see 17 inches, you probably want to stay away from the water, okay? Yeah, yeah. But that's how, so when they're hunting for these animals down south during hunting seasons, and they only see the head, they know how big that animal is. Now it's not an exact one to 12, but it's pretty close to it. The animal, he doesn't look at us as a food item. Over the last 100 and some years, there's only been 29 people killed from alligators. That is not a big number. You still have to know what you're doing or you're gonna get hurt, okay? Crocodiles are different. They're wired differently up here. So when we work with our crocodiles, alligators we work one-on-one -on -one with, no big deal. My train staff does that. When we work with our crocs, there has to be at least two of us because he looks at us as a food item. And so he's looking for weaknesses, he's studying you, He's analyzing, he's looking for a way to figure out how to get you in his belly. It's also good to have a dominant male here because if we take him out, the other sub-adult males in there start causing chaos, okay? And so he can, tends oh, to keep things so, under, yeah, he yeah. does. Like a bull elephant would right. control his zone. If that. he comes out of there, then the, the other juvenile males go out and kill everything because they have no discipline mm -hmm. within the herd. So he does the same kind of thing here. My daughter starts training them. And by training, I mean we teach them verbal commands. We teach them colors. We call that targeting. So we have sticks with colored tape. That way, if she wants to go and work with an individual animal, she calls them over and they touch their stick or their target stick. They touch their color 
with their nose. Uh, they're big at communications. If you just know what to look for, they'll let you know their emotions. They do have emotions, so they make seven different sounds. One of the sounds they make is they'll actually sit in the water and arch themselves, and they'll open their mouths a little bit, and they'll slam their jaws together. A little bit of water goes flying everywhere, but we like to hear that because that means I feel good about myself. I'm, I feel confident. Uh, I feel like I can, I'm a healthy animal. So anytime we hear that sound, we all know what it sounds like. Oh, good. There's an animal that maybe we were a little worried about psychologically. That's a good sound because now he's on his way to being the healthy alligator he was meant to be. Now I can go in and tap you here and you'll swing around. Most of them are from private individuals that just could not take care of them anymore. So they either was getting too big, uh, maybe a family situation was taking place, and maybe it was in an illegal situation of some kind, or maybe the folks were leaving and moving to another state and they couldn't take the animal with them. So they were confronted with making, having to make a decision. So again, a lot of these animals will come into that three to four foot range. Usually by Thanksgiving, any alligator that would have been released is dead at that point. And then you're just gonna have a carcass to deal with at that point. But there's just, he's just not gonna make it. So we, we highly encourage people not to get this animal. It's just, it's just not, Michigan's not set up for that. Uh, we have alligators from 21 states though right now from all over the place. Godzilla came to us about, let's see, in 2006. He came from a pet store up in the Cadillac Ludington area. The store closed up and his owner just donated him to us. He's been in our family uh, almost 20 years. So he's very familiar with all of us. He knows about 25 different command words. Uh, 29 years old, he will live another 60 to 70 years if my grandchildren and unborn great-grandchildren do, do good by him. He will probably gain or get another six or seven feet long. Uh, this alligator's name is Blue, right? Yeah, yeah. He is from Dearborn, Michigan, which is metro Detroit. Uh, been in the last well, it's about four or five months now. And the young man that had this could no longer take care of it. His mom told him to get rid of it somehow. So uh, now he's, he's one of the show animals that That's Rice right. takes out and, and educates folks on the do's, the don'ts, and the cool things about this particular type of species. So, well, he goes, what? I want to go back in the water. <laughs> I mean, they're never going to be the puppy dog that you want them to be and sit on your lap, although we've had a few of them come in like that. <laughs> but um, they're just like a little mini dinosaur. Right? 